Mississippi State and Arkansas, seven to three. All my content on this channel is made possible by Farm Bureau Insurance of Mississippi. Farm Bureau, go with the home team. Not a lot of passing yards. Neither team had 100 passing yards in the game. So this was pretty much a defensive struggle. Um, does anybody really appreciate a good old fashioned defensive struggle anymore? Well, I can tell you this, state fans appreciate it. When you play a game like that, you might as well win it, right? And State's defense did play its best game, I thought, of the year. That includes the first one. That includes the last one. They played their best game of the year defensively. And when you pair a much better defensive effort for State with a terrible offensive effort for Arkansas, put them together, what do you get? Arkansas had a field goal in the game, that's it, and that came on a short field after an interception in the first quarter. So... They didn't get anything the rest of the ball game. State had a few players, particularly SEC Defensive Player of the Week, Buki Watson, linebacker, and Sean Preston, the safety, who really stepped up. Let's take a look. At right, first, well, second play of the game, second nine. Get vertical up the sideline, a little out route here. Corner shoots down, safety comes over, and he's the one who actually uh, picks this football. So let's check it out. See, it looks like RPO. I said play action. It looks like RPO. He just reads the eyes of the quarterback and jumps it, and you get a pick going the other way. And it led to their only score of the ball game. And, you know, again, like as far as figuring out how it's coached and like what a quarterback is reading right here, uh, I don't know. But let's just assume that it is RPO. Kind of looks like it to me because you're getting a combo back here and then up to the linebacker. Center actually kind of chases the linebacker a little bit, which, you know, looks like a little bit of a zone scheme. Uh, to me, where you would read it. And so you go, well, who are you reading? And in this case, it's not an unblocked defensive end because your tackle is out on him. So, you know, maybe it's that first play side inside linebacker right there. You know, maybe that's the read. Kind of looks like he possibly puts his eyes there. You know, you see what I mean? Then what he gets is with two safeties over the top, <clears throat> two receivers into the boundary, he gets the cornerback coming downhill Okay, and the safety coming over. And what we don't know is, did they call a corner fire or a corner blitz with the safety coming over? You know, I don't know. Maybe. It could just be that, you know, this action and being a run-heavy team tells corner come over, that's that's the adjust. If it's to your side, you come on down, you come on over. Um, again, if he's reading here, you get a little bit of a hang, and so he decides to pull it. But by virtue of the route, out route, the corner runs right into the throwing lane of the underneath route. You can see that right here. So what I mean is quarterback can't throw it through this corner to this out route. So even though it looks like underneath is wide open from the sideline view, it's really not, according to the quarterback. He's got a guy in his lane. So I think that's why he goes you know, to the next level. And <clears throat> you know, this is one of those where if ifs and buts were candy and nuts, if you get a pump fake right here. He jumps it. You run past him and throw an easy touchdown. There's nothing left. But we don't know what's called. And, you know, you, there, there's a possibility you had something else called, but when this corner jumps down inside, it, it he thinks it's corner blitz, so he tries to, to, you know, run into the hole right there. What I do know is that it looks to me like the safety did a nice job of coming over. He just reads the eyes of the quarterback and you throw it right to him. And whatever you had called, the thing you probably don't anticipate is at the time the ball's thrown, you got two receivers who are really close to each other within four yards of each other in the same part of the field. So, again, I don't know if it's a route bust, but it didn't work out, obviously. <clears throat> All right, so you kind of see quarterback's view. Again, let's just say, for our purposes, let's say he's reading him and – you know, on the play fake, if he's here, we give. If he's here or here, we pull and and throw. I, You know, let's just say that's the case. Well, if he's reading him, it looks like he is. Right here he steps, see him step down inside, and now I pull. It looks like it's not blocked up, but you're getting this combo right here, okay, to there. The, really the issue in the whole play would be if you waited any longer, you're kind of getting beat right here, so that would probably blow it up. But – you could see if it wound up being a give, there's a hole, and it's big yards. If he doesn't get him, it's out the gate, and you may have a foot race if he if he gives it. Uh, so it's not necessarily defended all that well, except for the one spot, and you, you throw him a mistake right here. But you can see what I mean. Like for him, 
you know, corners getting up off the ground if you, you, you don't really have the throwing lane to the underneath, but trying to put it up to the next guy and the safety's just read his eyes the whole way. So they come back right after that and bunch and throw a, uh, get a 19 yard throw down here, get them in field goal range. They're in bunch into the boundary, three receiver route, two shallow, one gets a deep corner, and that's just a throw and catch. Pretty good coverage too. I mean, you're in pretty good position. One of those where you're actually in good enough position where a coach may tell you, look, you gotta make a play on the ball. I mean, you're in the right spot, so get your hand on the ball. What uh, State, I think, does a nice job here sort of disguising what they're doing defensively because pre-snap, yes, you have you know, four really on the line of scrimmage, three down and two standing up. So three down and Jet and another standing up. So you got five there. Six would be Buki in the middle. So really a six-man box. But pre-snap, the safeties have split the ball. You see one here, one here, balls on the hash. So it, it definitely has a too high safety look with a corner who's a little soft here and a little harder corner out to the boundary. But what State's actually doing is playing man-to-man. It's man-to-man on the number one. It's safety is jumping in man-to-man and corner is jumping in man-to-man on these three. Okay, so it's man there, it's man here, and this safety is a free safety in the middle of the field. So you get man free. So it looks like cover two pre-snap, it's actually man-free coverage, but it doesn't confuse him. State rushes five. They got six-man protect. So the five that are coming are the three down and the two linebackers. Okay, here, there's your five. They've got five linemen and a six. The running back is in protection. He winds up picking up uh, Buki Watson here late in the protection. He doesn't really pick him up. It's just the ball gets out in time. And if we look at the routes, <clears throat> you can see kind of what's happening right here is – The top receiver in the bunch is taking an outside release on his man, his outside shoulder, push him up, stem him up, deep corner. Uh, Outside is is coming across, and these two guys are switching right here, you know, to see if you, you know, get the underneath done. You get inside release here on the backside, and instead of running vertical, he actually comes in, breaks his thing off into where the safety is. But the protection holds up, and so he's able to stand in there and you know, hit the corner down the field. Here's what I mean. You know, there's a defensive back who's in good position who really has covered the route. Now it's just a matter of what's the position of the ball. And it is a perfect throw outside shoulder. If it's left inside, DB's going to break this up. But uh, just good throw and catch. And that's actually their longest completion of the game, 19 yards. So they later had a third down scoring play called right here and just don't make the throw. Uh, It's actually open. It's a little... You know, cluttered and muddy, but he's open there at the goal line. Just a really, really poor throw. I'm not sure what the disconnect is there. Like if he thinks he's going somewhere else or, you know, if you just miss him. It's a really poor throw. Putting him on the move, and you could tell they were going to do it, right? Because it's double tight um, and one of those on the line of scrimmage. But he can't go out for a route because he's covered up out here by the, you know, outside receiver. So they're going to have six-man and seven-man protect. State is matching up man-to-man with all three receivers here to the wide side of the field. They're going to roll the quarterback that way. You get guys who hang back here to make sure you don't get some sort of throwback touchdown. Uh, That's their job in a man scheme. And then you look, what happens is they're they're not really running a pick, even though it looks like it. This is one of those – where it looks like you're trying to run a pick off of each other here and cross up your defenders. But what they do, they kind of – who knows what they had called, but it looks to me like they're trying to fake um, the deal and switch and run out of it and cover up a defender. And, and and they run into each other. So that's why it looks really cluttered. You see this right here? Like the guy who is was the inside receiver goes up. He's trying to set the, the pick – and just slams right into his own teammate. It's really the only reason it's not a penalty. If you slam in their defender that way, it might be a penalty. So he's able to get off of it. Two defenders get tangled up, and so at the time the ball is thrown, you can see that like this defender was initially running with this receiver. This defender was initially running with the guy we're throwing it to, and he's actually gotten himself open here to the goal line. The ball is just thrown behind and low, so it's just a quarterback miss right here. All right, here's another third down stop for State's defense uh, later first quarter. They're two by two, a little pre-snap motion. It looks like six are coming, but it's really only four. 
protection doesn't really hold up. But if you see, there's a lot of coverage downfield, right? Like, I mean, guys are on guys. Is what I'm saying. Like, in this little screenshot, you're you're covered. You know, you're in the pocket. You're making it. Whether you are covered and going to get picks, I don't know. But you're right on receivers, and so it's tight windows. You're trying to throw it into, and you almost throw it to a safety, who seems to be the free safety here. So on that note. If you look here, pre-snap, um, safety in the middle of the field. Quarterback sees that all, all the time. Soft corner, soft corner. So without pre-snap motion, you know, it would tell you that, you know, it, it kind of looks like a soft cover, cover three that they're going to play here on third and six with safety in the middle of the field. Some sort of single high safety. The deal is, though, Everybody's up here on the line of scrimmage, you know, inching up and giving you these different looks. So then you think, okay, two, it's also third and six. So if they all come, it heats me up, and then this has to turn into some sort of man. And 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 to me, that's kind of what it looks like happens. So if you just watch the rush real quick, like as a quarterback, okay, here it comes. And now I'm thinking, you know, if you're reading left or right, depending on who comes, you know you've got six-man protect with the running back, so you want to sit in there, but he can't. Okay, so just from a protection standpoint, he can't sit in there. Let's look down here at the bottom. Uh, I believe this is Crumity who's going across the face of the tackle to draw that attention and try to go outside, and Purvis, the linebacker, is on the twist coming back to the inside, and it doesn't get picked up. So you'd like to stand in there and read, but right now, even though he's looking the other way, right now quarterback's going to feel this. Just about every time he's going to feel it. And there he is. See, so he's stepping around it. We've not picked up a twist. Now I got to move up, and I'm off schedule already. What state did in the secondary two to me again? Like you say, it looked like a zone look. But if you'll notice on the snap of the ball, everybody's matching up um, in what looks like you know man to man stuff. It get, you get a little bit of a pass off down here into the uh, boundary, but still it's. You know, matching routes like a man coverage with a safety in the middle of the field. And I don't know if that throws him off a little bit or not. Jet Johnson, who's on the edge, hits the underneath route, but turns him loose and then goes to get to, you know, to get involved in the rush late. See that? And so what you've got is flat defender who's jumping on flat route. Uh, you had a defender here who's jumping on the inside route. And I think he got a little confused. That may be decam here, number three. I can't really see. I think it's three. But you see this defender initially step out like he's got flat, and then it's almost like he realizes, oh, no, I don't. He's inside. I got to go. I got to go get this route. So with a clean pocket on third and six, he's going to stand in here and throw it right up by the ear of the official you know, and complete that to that route on the inside because a linebacker came, but he can't do it because of the rush. Good-looking play design that works here. Uh, for state with uh, motion across, you got a tight end to the field, another tight end lined up as an H back fullback to the wide side of the field. So, like initially, state had one, two, three, and four, but with the motion, now you bring one across, you're kind of balancing the formation. And look, it looks like running play, everything going this way, including the back. And whether it's a read or not, I don't know. But I just know it's a great decision to pull. And then, you know, here you go. You're one shoestring tackle away from being a foot race to the other end of the field. And that player for Arkansas did a pretty nice job to lunge and get a hand on him right there. But, um, yeah, it's good design. So I've been trying to figure out if it's a read, and it, and it very possibly could be. Because if you look, the backside in man line of scrimmage, and that would be this player right here, Nobody blocks him, and so that would you would think be an intentional deal of possibly reading it. So even the backside tackle is all the way across inside. We're all going out, you know, like wide. It's almost like a wide zone, but coming from the handoff, coming from the backside to the back, and get everybody flowing that way. And you only have two leads, and that is the up back who also is bypassing the end man on the line of scrimmage, and the receiver who's up out on the edge. So again. If it's a read, and let's let's say for our purposes it is, he's going to look at that guy, and if he, uh, at the mesh point, if he's upfield or if he hesitates, we're gone, I give. 
But if he goes inside, I'll pull and then I'll follow. And so it looks like, boom, he goes inside, he follows the tackle. Again, if it's a read, now you pull and here we go. And uh, you got one safety over the top. We got to get him blocked, got to get him blocked. Both of those things happen. Good job by the wide receiver, too. I mean, you know, you get on him, lock him out. Good block right here. This is a deal, too, where if you're the freshman tight end, good job, you're in the right place, hat on a hat. But if he goes to the ground like this and you're up, you stay up and now find another. Because if, and this is tough, it's all happening in a half a second. It's easy when I pause a video. But you see him on the ground, you know, instead of laying on him, you just move to the next one. If you get this block right here, he kind of blocked himself. The other guy did. So if you get pick up that block right there, now it takes a free safety basically to make a one-on-one -on -one play down the field. But uh, at any rate, still a big play. 28 came and got a hand on him. It was a good job to slow him up. Otherwise, Mike would be off to the races. Here's the third down, third and 11. And this one is all going to start with Nathaniel Watson, linebacker, SEC defensive player of the week. With a rush, flushing a quarterback. He can't get on schedule from the pocket. And then you get some pursuit from a teammate, and uh, so you're able to make him run and get him short of the line to gain there. We're not able to see the routes down the field and the coverage uh, for that matter, but it is some sort of zone, like a, a cover three zone, safety in the middle. It could be, you know, a variation of zone coverage, but it does look like it's cover three zone with, you know, three deep and everybody else has got underneath responsibilities here some shape, form, fashion. Actually, I think probably what happens here is he comes in as an underneath zone defender and he is over the top for that third and that, and that's how they get the, the three deep thirds covered. It's only a four-man rush, you know, but the four who are on the line of scrimmage don't all come. So one, two, and three. The fourth drops. He's in the coverage and here comes Watson over this side. So if you'll just you don't want to see where it happens. Again, just watch 14 to begin with. Attacks a guard outside shoulder, splits him, he's gone. Got skinny, got low leverage, both you know speed, quickness, and sort of with his angle. He's straight to the quarterback. Quarterback you know, steps through there. And then this is a good job by a young defensive end who's uh, getting his first snaps this year and playing pretty well, and that's Anderson, 91. If you watch him, He's taking on the tackle one-on-one, -on -one, extend him, and now get loose. This is a good job, and really pursue. Uh, so you don't make it easy on him, right? Like now he's got to deal with this as opposed to just survey and decide, can I make a late throw? Um, it helps with everything. Receivers come off routes and start blocking, and then you get off the field. Starts with Buki Watson, though. Pretty interesting play here. Speed motion across with Xavion, and then he becomes the screen player where it's a screen with one lineman turn them loose, get downfield, and then you get um, tight end and receiver upfield blocking out in front of. So a little backside screen off play action right here. Uh, complete it. And then it's a matter of making one miss. It looked like touchdown, but he steps on the out-of-bounds line right past the first down marker there, or close to the marker, the, the three. Um, there's several things about this play. You know, the design is really good and, and interesting. So it's two by two eligible receivers pre-snap in the pistol with the back behind the, the quarterback. So they're pretty typical front. Three down, uh, a fourth is a walked up there. So to balance the front, you got four on the front. Uh, you, you're kind of singling up outside down here in the red zone, but, you know, getting not – necessarily normal pre-snap alignment because you don't want to give away what you're in if it's man or whatever but if you're running a screen you really do hope that it's um, you know some sort of pass rush like if you're blitzing that's even better we're going to run this screen and with the motion across there's some urgency coming this is a really good job by the quarterback right here there's urgency off the edge okay so tight end Harmon and Tulu are upfield going to get the first one and they both block him all the way into the sideline uh, whoever that is, whether it's the one who comes over. And the quarterback's going to turn his back to that free rusher right here and give this play fake, knowing that Xavion's got to bypass him and get out. One thing that does help him, though, is Xavion kind of delaying just a little bit there, he hesitating. But to turn free and then get that ball up and not get it batted down, 
where it's catchable. And that is a perfect throw so that I can catch it and run. I don't have to labor to catch the ball or turn around. Um, and because of the run fake, the entire defense has gone with it. When you look at the uh, front, I mean, everybody's at run fake here except, you know, really three guys. One uh, who's in cover, well, two who are in coverage and a safety coming over who the, the lineman is going to pick up here. Uh, so it's a good job to get the playoff, good call. You know, this is not a bad job by uh, Lewis to tackle just because he's in position and you've got someone running around the block here. Um, so you beat that pretty easily. And then just one step, a couple of toes hit the sideline to keep you out of the end zone right there. You can see his foot right here, bottom of the screen. Yeah, it's on the chalk. Really close play. Here's a good look at it. Pylon cam. Right there, steps out. You're actually going to get a free release backside flat route from Woody Marks right here and uh, a route on top to sort of hold them. Play fake comes around to nobody and then you're sort of waggling out of this. It's not naked bootleg, but just play fake and then continue and roll. Hit him and we're in. And Arkansas is in you know, a form of man matching routes and play a man down here on the goal line after the motion state winds up in two by two in terms of, you know, eligible receivers right here. And, of course, the back is eligible also. And what they do is you got a defender who's lined up over the slot, which is Harmon, but his eyes are squarely on the back. That's his responsibility there. Uh, I do believe that you know one of these guys out here has got responsibility tied in, but he steps in at the beginning of the play, and so that gets handed off. So you really have two with Harmon in the back of the end zone. But this player here has to step and then turn and run with Woody to the flat because that's his responsibility. You see him step in. Now he's beat. And this is a good job by the quarterback right here. There's no play fake, but you got a guy breathing on you and throw it catchable. You know, again, if this is a poor, inaccurate throw that makes him stop, maybe he doesn't score, if it turns him around, if it makes him jump, but because you're able to throw it where he can catch it without really having to slow down, now you're able to get it in the end zone without getting tackled. Here's Arkansas, third and four. They've motioned over here to three by one receivers, and they've got a little bit of a double screen type of look, like uh, one to the back, possibly one here to the backside. You know, again, maybe there's a read involved for the quarterback that would tell him to go one way or the other. At any rate, State's in man, and so they bring the house and totally smother it on third and four. And, you know, they did a good job getting something uh, there. Well, I getting, you know, a little bit closer to the line of scrimmage after the throw and catch trying to just make something happen at midfield, third and four. But, again, what you can see, State is really not even trying to hide it here after the motion. We're jumping in man uh, with a with a safety in the, the middle of the field. When you see the back go out this side, you're going to see run, you know backer run with him, so it's man. So initially it looks like th six-man rush, one, two, three down, and one, two, three linebackers. But when the, the back goes out, he runs with him or is going to run with him. So it's really just a five-man rush, right? Three that are shaded to the wide side of the field and then the two linebackers here. Well, nobody picks up uh, Watson right over the center. And so this is just, you know, a play call. This is a deal where they got a certain, you know, deal call for third and four. State calls something that is perfect that's really sort of overloading. If you look – because of their formation, you got three linemen, right? One, two, three. Center over, obviously. Center guard and tackle. State's got one, two, three, and four really to that side, if that makes sense. If you look up here, right guard, right tackle, you're two on two if they come, but they're not coming because you're going to run one off with the back. So it's really sort of an alignment and a call thing that works out where Arkansas is not adjusting to this pre-snap and sending this back in here in any way, and they don't have enough. So you're bringing more than they can block, even though you know they should have enough. And you're free, he dumps it off late, and you're blown up. All right, this is an example of what can happen when you don't block linebackers on run plays. 
This is Jet Johnson right here, third and five for Arkansas. They move the back over. And again, you're talking about it's a team game, so here's a back who kind of finds out what it's like, I think, when somebody up front misses a block or is not where they're supposed to be. Quarterback's reading, you give, watch Jet. Boom. I mean, Seven almost never sees him coming. He does a pretty good job to try to spin out of it once he jumps into the hole right there. But they're not comboing with that backside guard up to the linebacker. Now, you know, again, maybe it's because pre-snap they see one thing and you see the linebacker watching there shooting the gap. And so maybe the thing is, okay, well, we're taken care of. I just don't think so because, you know, you need to have a hat on a hat in that in that box. Because it's third and five and State is soft, they're in a soft zone right here, third and five. These are zone defenders underneath. State lines up with four on the line of scrimmage, five here. And what Arkansas is doing is letting the quarterback read the unblocked uh, in-man line of scrimmage right here. Not going to block him on purpose. Step inside. See, quarterback's looking at him. And you get in depth. He's not firing up field. He's just kind of hanging. So this is a give. If he'd flown down inside, he's going to pull this thing and run, and maybe it's RPO. But right here, you're giving backside. So how many are there? backside. What you get is Watson trying to run through the gap and is caught by the right guard. Right tackle is out on end. And so that leaves you center, backside guard 62 that are comboing, supposed to, in the zone off the nose and one combos up to the next level. Right? And you, and you, and you block here and, and then you're reading right here. But what happens is pre-snap because of the soft zone, Jet's way out of the picture pre-snap. So I think that's one thing that makes it hard on the guard. But, you know, again, based on what I understand is the combo begins to happen right here. But once he's across the gap, now in this deal, you you know, step on through uh, up to the next level and find one. 62 stays with Pickering, just tries to push or 92 and pushes him down. That leaves Jet in the hole. And when it's running back and linebacker in a hole in a running play, in the Southeastern Conference, a linebacker has to win, and this is how you do it. Put your shoulder in there, boom, turn him around right away, hang on, stop on third and five. All right, there's really not much to draw up here. You got a go route on the outside here, and it's just throwing it up for grabs. The situation in the game where State's backed up here, they got a one-score lead, and it's third and 11. And you've had all kinds of false starts and you know, snap infractions up here on the front in this little scenario, and you're just heaving it up, giving somebody a chance, okay? Four-man rush, pretty good job in the protection, and then just throw it up for a guy who totally makes a play. You're putting it up in traffic. The best thing about this from Mike Wright's standpoint right here, this is good, is that the ball is thrown high. I got a 6'5 who wants to jump. That's the plan right here. I want him to have a better chance to out jump and get this. If I try to drill it in there, I'm going to try to lead him perfect. They're breaking this up. Man, just put it up here in the lights. Put it up above the rim on top of the backboard and just see if he can't out jump them for the ball. And that's the best thing about this throw. And then it's just a phenomenal play here by the receiver. I mean, that's why you're a receiver. That's why you recruited Holly and Justin Robinson makes a huge play in the game. You know, I know you have the lead. If you don't get this, you get a chance to punt, but you're you're snapping it short. And this gave the game some air, even though you didn't go score, and it and it sort of pro- protected your lead. Put it up high, high point it, and that's the way it's done. All right, this is a good example of sometimes there's other things going on that can really affect the play. Um, back here, you got Sean Preston at safety, who's going to come in here and pick one off on a late throw on a third and 14. And State's only rushing three, and we focus on the downfield. But one thing that really affects it, I think, is this two gap twist that is called with Crummy right here, where the other two are coming all the way across. He's coming all the way around to get picked up on the backside and get some late pressure because he doesn't quit on the play. If you watch Crummy right there, you see that? So it's two gaps, one, two, coming around, try to get this tight off the edge so I'm as close to the quarterback as I can be when I'm coming off. And then when when he steps and beats me to the outside, watch this move. Don't quit. Don't get blocked and just 
to say, well, I'm in where I'm supposed to be. I'm not going to let him run. Urgency, he's not throwing it yet. Now, here he comes. And I don't care who you are. <laughs> when you're right here, you have to make the throw and you can't turn it over. But when you're in this position, even though it's a three-man rush, even though you're climbing the pocket like you're supposed to, you hadn't gotten it gone yet. You feel and see this opposite jersey who has some urgency. It's coming. I mean, you feel that. And, you know, again, I think, yes, before he gets hit, he's made up where he's throwing the ball. But there's just a little bit of rushing it, it and rushing the decision going on right here because of Crumity and his urgency. So, you know, it's just an example of it's a team game and teammates help create for teammates. So you, you chunk it up there, a little bit of a rush. And I don't think he could see the safety. And this is a great job, too, making a play on the ball and a big play in the game by Sean Preston, who I thought had a really good ball game for uh, Mississippi State. They gave you a behind angle, and you can kind of see there that it, it's – your quarterback sees things a lot differently than what we see when we're watching on TV or whatever down here on field level. You can actually see, like, eyes are this side of the field. And he knows he's got double dig. It's third and 14. I have to let it go. But because he's climbed the pocket and he knows I'm about to get rushed, even though he doesn't get killed – he just does not see the safety here who's going to play the ball a little bit better in the air. He's giving a guy a chance, but basically throws it right to Sean and who goes up and makes a play. All right, here is a play that much is made about. This is an early snap. Receiver's not set, but the ball gets away. They pick it up and they go score, but it comes back, and Arkansas fans are booing really mad. You know, Arkansas was going to have a defensive touchdown and maybe win the game, but you can see them blowing it dead because the play – never happen. And here's the deal. Everybody's saying, you know, how fortunate you were that it's a false start, but it's not on the receiver, okay? A couple things about this. If you look, everybody on offense knows we got to be set, especially the quarterback. So he's watching Xavion Thomas come out here to get set on the line of scrimmage, who then has to look at the sideline, signal to the official, am I on or off? In this case, he's going to be on, um, because I think that's a hip tight end right there. And look where the eyes of the quarterback are. He's watching, too, to make sure he's lined up before he calls for the snap. At what point he's lined up, then he will then look ahead, call for the snap, and here we go. But he's looking to make sure he's lined up first. Why? It's this normal thing. Everybody do, doing their job. But the same thing happens here that happened on the goal line, and that is some something, whatever it is, causing – an early snap. It happened over and over. State, I know, uses a hand clap snap count. Uh, whether or not they use anything verbal, I don't know. But obviously, something is going on here at this point in the game. It happened a ton of times back here, three or four times back here on the goal line. And now it happens again where he's not calling for the snap. The quarterback is not asking. He has not called a snap count. He's not clapped his hands. Nothing. And the reason is the receiver isn't set. If the receiver had gotten set, he would have been looking for the snap when it came to him. Something was going on that was causing Cole Smith to snap the ball before the quarterback was calling for it, whether it's somebody calling out a snap count or what. And that's what happens here. Because at the point when he actually – see, he's snapping the ball, nobody's looking for it. We're still waiting for him to line up, which is normal, his job. I'm waiting for him to line up. That's normal. That's my job. I'm not. I haven't even called for the snap. So this is on, you know, whatever was going on the line of scrimmage, and it was more the same. And it was the right call that there was motion before it, so it's a false start, and State's fortunate that it was a false start. And this is an important sequence of plays here. They've got it first and 10, down 7 to 3, 655 left in the uh, ball game. And right here, a two-back system where they're doing a little read action here with the quarterback uh, on the mesh. They don't get it blocked right, but this is an example of sometimes how far Sean Preston will go to make plays. And he's a guy who has consistently played well this year. Um, read it, give it backside. They don't block the linebacker, and here comes Preston. See, and you're not going to see very many one-on-one, as I showed you earlier, missed tackles like this for a guy like Jet. He does get, he does lunge a little bit, and I think Jet may be getting stepped on, and that's what holds him up. Uh, again, like I say, you don't see Jet step up in the hole very often and not be able to get to a ball here. So I, I can't tell if his foot stuck or not. He does take a um, little bit of a lunge and a 
stiff arm to the face, but you just don't see him miss very much like that. I wondered if he got his foot stepped on right there, and that sort of held him up. Um, but it's a good thing Preston is doing what he's doing. You know, if you look pre-snap, when the ball snapped, look how far he is. He's seven to eight yards away from the line of scrimmage, okay, to the wide side of the field. Quick read, and the ball's going back here, and he's the one that has come across and made the play. And it's just heads-up football from a safety who's being asked to come down in the box and then get there with some intention of driving back. And so very next play after that stop, now you're second and ten, and uh, you didn't make anything on first down, and now it's a tackle for loss. And this is uh, Watson, Nathaniel Watson, Buki Watson, doing what he does, just making a play. Watch him come inside on the left tackle off the – what is sort of like acts like a twist and he's straight to the quarterback just beats him there you know state um is drawing up some aggressive stuff here in in this ball game they've got two backs so it's two by one receiver so they're not lined up with a ton of receivers in the package to begin with and state's going with a quarter's coverage he's got a quarter of the field deep he's got a quarter he's got half of the field deep so quarter quarter half and that's your deep coverage and your zone coverage underneath, rushing for. I'll show you how that works. Sort of just, you know, twisting it on the front. And that is three down. There's Purvis. There's Watson. And really, he's on the line of scrimmage. He bails as in coverage. He comes. And so just kind of flipping the front. And right here, it's a good job. Step, attack the outside shoulder of the guard and kind of set it up and and you're giving him away a lane to come inside on the tackle. And Buki gets there. So you set it up. He's inside, take on the guard. Uh, you're getting combo back here, center guard on the nose. Here's the lane. He can smell it. And what's amazing to me is it's, you know, sometimes it just works this way, but it, it can't work this way. If you're an offense, it can't work this way and last long. And that is we got five linemen, and we are using the back six – and seven checking in protection. They got a seven-man protection. State is rushing four, and it gets home with the quarterback. You know, you just you can't have it where nobody's able to pick him up. You're leaving that tackle single, and it's a really good football player in Watson who just beats him into the inside, and he's right in the lap of the quarterback. All right, this is the Hail Mary at the end of the game, and – you know, it's always a toss-up, but there's a couple of things that have to happen for it to work, I think. And, you know, you're snapping it across midfield, which is really good, and pretty much any QB at this level of football is going to be able to get back here at about 55 yards away, 56, 57, 58 yards away, and easily put the ball in the end zone. And I commented on the broadcast, I said, you know, with his arm, they are in – frankly, easy range if he has time to put this thing in the lights and throw it all the way back there into the end zone with air under it. Uh, State, naturally, you know, they're really only rushing three. You got one, a fourth, that's jet. But this is, you know, you're just trying to keep him in the pocket, maybe force an early throw. He's got plenty of time. Okay, and he's sticking his left foot on the 44, which is, you know, 56 yards away from the goal line. So you got to put this thing 56 to 66 yards in the air with with some air under it. And I was just surprised right here that it came down here. Now, naturally, like if this ball lands, it's going to land here. But really what you want is you want that thing up here and you want it coming down, you know, right about where that R is so that it's jump ball. If When, when something is, you know, and it's Hail, Hail Mary stuff, when the ball's coming more down, you get a bat, it's more likely it's going to be a soft bat where you, maybe you could catch it. And if it is batted to the ground, you got a better chance of falling down, maybe catching it with your arms under it before it hits the turf. It, it's just, it ain't going to work very often if you put a ball where it's being touched actually at or inside the goal line, not even quite in there yet. I was a little surprised by that. Now, you know, it's easy to be nitpicky, but for a guy with the arm strength of KJ Jefferson, when I saw this, Honestly, and I know they said he wasn't hurt, and Sam Pittman said they had no indications that he was hurt or anything like that. But when I saw that, I know he's got the arm strength. And, you know, to put it in the lights, way up in the sky, and have that thing, 
instead of you know coming down here at or before the goal line, coming straight down here on the R, that's really what you want. And I was a little surprised that he didn't get it there. So it just led me to wonder, you know, was he a little more banged up than anybody realized? All right, appreciate that. Thanks for watching. On to the next one, Auburn this week. Let me know what you think in the comments. And hit me up on Instagram and Twitter as well. I'm at Radio Wyatt. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.